So welcome to the documentation office hours. It's the 26th of April, 2021. And we're doing office hours for Asia and Australia today. This is great. Thank you very much. So here's what I've got as possible topics. Uh, we've got the She Code Africa Contributathon uh, running. We're in the very last week of it. And then I just received today the search report from the Jenkins plugin site that may give us some insights in terms of documentation. Are there other topics that you would like to add onto our agenda? Oh, oh, wait a sec. And Sudakar, you're reminding me, I should have the decency of making this big enough for human beings to actually read it. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, terrible. Yeah. And Sudakar, are there any specific topics you would like to like to discuss? So I know we've got, I guess one that's on my list is Contributor Summit that is okay. coming up June 25 uh, with the CDCon conference. So if you're not registered for that, so we should we should talk about that. Sorry, okay. Sudakar, and here I am interrupting. Anything else you would like to put on the agenda? No, the only item I wanted to check was uh, I was interested in the Google season of Docs project. If, oh. Okay, and uh, are you, uh, I, uh, would I get uh, reviewers if I decide to, I, I am willing to do it on my own time. So uh, I would, okay. how would Good. I? Good, all right, well, so let's, we, we certainly can spend time discussing that. I would love to discuss it. Let's talk about it. Um, yeah. So Mark and Sudhakar. One more thing. Sorry, go ahead. I missed that. Said, could you say that again? Sure. So I was wondering that uh, we can have a really, really brief discussion about uh, documentation related to JCASC plugin. Okay. Ah. Great, all right. A good topic. Any other topics? Um, do we wanna revisit the issue of the steps documentation? We've gotten some with She Code Africa, but I think we've still got a problem in that area. Do we wanna talk about our future? Yeah, that's, that's okay. That's a very good one. Let me, let's pipeline steps, improvements. How about if we put it that way, Meg? And okay. then we'll we'll talk strategy about it, show it with Sudhakar and Diraj here, here both. It's good to have extra sets of eyes to look at it and, and give inputs. Good, okay. Any other topics? No, that's it from my side. Okay, good. All right, so Sudhakar, you had mentioned, so we had, we had proposed the Jenkins project proposed a Google Summer of Docs or a Google Season of Docs project. Yeah. But it was um, was not accepted. They only accepted 30 projects this year and we were not one of them. And so yeah. we're, we're doing a retrospective now to try to understand what we could have done better to do a better job. However, uh, there's still an opportunity for us to consider. So the project definition is still there. Yeah. Right. Is still available and it's Jenkins on Kubernetes. Yeah. And so that's that's certainly very interesting for for us to get further documentation for Jenkins on Kubernetes. I think your question was, are we willing to review pull requests? Yes, absolutely. We're willing to review pull requests. Okay. Now, if the second question is, is the Jenkins project ready to fund a, a writer to do the writing? The answer there is yes, potentially in the future. Yeah. So we're ready, willing to review pull requests immediately. Okay. The, when I say in the future, is the project willing to fund documentation development something like like GSOD would have been? And the answer is yes, the governance board has, 
has been has been willing to consider that. Okay. The problem is our mentors are are loaded right now with Google Season of Code or Google Summer of Code. And that will continue until September. So the likely time when a funded development effort would be is probably not until September at the earliest. Yeah, uh, uh, for me, uh, that's okay. I can start and maybe by that time I'll finish it, but funding is not uh, of a, a real need for me at this time. Okay. All that I need is uh, full request review. Uh, like for example, right? I will do an initial outline as to how I will approach it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe in another one or two submissions, I'll finish the submission. And that, uh, that would be absolutely exceptional. So we've actually got a, uh, let me give the, this is my rough draft that you, you are welcome to consider as, as just a rough draft and see, hey, what, would, what could we do instead of that? Uh, my rough draft came in this Google Season of Docs 2021 application. Oh, nope, nope. Hasn't been merged yet. Shame on me. Okay, so let's go look at the pull request that's proposed to include it. Or maybe, maybe I can find it. Nope, that's not it. Okay, just a minute, I'll find it, I promise. So it is right here. Jenkins.io, the pull request hasn't been reviewed and merged yet. So it is this one and included in it is a detailed document about proposing an outline for the, for, for the, the whole thing. So, so let me, I'll embed this link and if I can find it, I will also embed this. The page is actually already there. I just have to find it in the navigation. So just, if we give it just a minute. Um, okay, documentation. And we need sub projects, Google season of doc or something. Yeah, here we go. Documentation, season of docs. And I think that, yeah, let's go find it here. It's got to be. Okay. Ah, this one I think is it. Yes, there it is. Okay, so here is my my poor and just so you're clear, Sudakar, poor attempt at an outline of the kinds of things that we should we should have covered, and be warned that as a uh, as a as a contributor, I am the worst of all possible people to suggest what is the best way to describe Jenkins on Kubernetes. I don't have enough Kubernetes experience to be a good one. So this is a great opportunity for somebody to come in with much better proposals than I would offer. Yeah, I, yeah, I have taught uh, cloud computing and systems for data analytics for uh, graduate students. So oh, wonderful. Oh, so you have, you have real world experience. That would be absolutely exceptional. Yeah, be, so, yeah. okay. So I'll take that outline and start off with. Uh, but I just wanted uh, uh, a, com a comment uh, and a question, basically. The approach would be to describe it, how to install using Minikube. Almost um, and, most of the features of Jenkins. Right, and, and yes. Then, and then provide links for the different cloud provider platforms. And I think that is that is an excellent approach and I can give you links to, to the existing materials, what we've got now. Last year, we did a Google Season of Docs uh, project that started this. And so we've got installing Jenkins on Kubernetes. 
Yeah. But, and what it has is, uh, let's see, it has Minikube. Mm -hmm. Minikube. Um, I think it has Helm charts. Yeah. And it's got one other variant that I don't recall. Let's see. Oh, YAML files, right? Oh, it's two others. YAML files and Jenkins operator. So. Okay. And, and yeah. those and Jenkins operator. And of course, Jenkins operator is an active project for, for this year as a proposed project for Google's summer of code. And so this one will, will likely get some attention. Um, Helm charts are actively being developed. YAML files, not so much charts. So yes, absolutely. That's, that's there. And then we had an additional section that was added that is incomplete, but has been published and is available under scaling Jenkins on Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. There. Okay. Uh, yeah, just one other question. Um, so now we have Jenkins X, right? That is being also being pushed. So what is the motivation for documenting uh, Jenkins on Kubernetes? So, so there are many, many use cases that Jenkins, Jenkins X is intensely focused solely on Kubernetes yeah. and on delivering microservice based things into cloud native environments. And yeah. that means there are many, many use cases that Jenkins X just can't do. On the flip side, there are many, many things in the cloud native world that Jenkins doesn't do as well as Jenkins X does. One is a, a horizontal, broad application, Jenkins, and the other one is a, a very intensely focused vertical application, Jenkins X. So they, they each sort of have their own sweet spot for where they, where they fit. And there are many, many users running Jenkins on Kubernetes because they need to be able to deploy to what you might call classic environments where they're running on Kubernetes for elasticity, but they mm -hmm. need to be able to still deploy back to virtual machines, or they need to be able to deliver code that's built on Windows and is an application or builds for an iPhone or for a, an Android phone. Okay, yeah, uh, okay. So yeah, I, I agree. Jenkins is kind of a canned solution for Kubernetes. Jenkins X. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do opinionate. Okay. That's all I had. Excellent. Well, thank, thank you. you. That's great. Looking forward to that, Sudhakar. Thank you very much. That's really wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So the next topic then was JCASC plugin documentation. So Duraj, you want to give us some insights on what brings you to the question and share with us some of your insights. Sure. So, am I audible? Hello? Yes. Am yeah. I audible? Yes. Yes. So, while working with JCASC, uh, I started just a few weeks back and I was trying to understand how it works. And uh, I searched the internet to understand what's the logic behind it. And I was able to find many, many blogs. And each of the blogs was describing like how you generate a YAML file and how to upload that YAML file to Jenkins and how you can just magically see that everything is being done with the help of that YAML file. And uh, all is good for uh, of those kinds of blogs. But from a person who wants to contribute to JCAS, uh, I think blogs need to cover something more than that. For example, they also need to tell us like it might be it will be really great if they can tell us as well like how things are working inside at the class level like how the yaml is being passed and each of the identification level data is being taken and being put into jenkins and how jenkins is using that and configuring itself like that level i'm more interested in now the question is why am i interested in that level because if I as a, as a contributor knows like 
how the yaml how the changes in yaml files are going to reflect in the jenkins at the class level then i'd be a better contributor i can contribute to this plugin uh, really well and uh, it would be really great like the contributor contribution level for this plugin would be increased uh, from even from uh, college students as well not be restricted to someone who just knows lots of ha has lots of experience in coding that's what i was aiming for yes because we don't have the for official documentation not counting blogs it, for jcask is the readme in the repo right mark that's that's correct so meg already highlights a very good point that that so let's let's identify some of the weaknesses that currently exist right yeah. so so diraj noted one developer documentation the other is there is no documentation for jcask on www.jenkins.io right it's or almost none i think it's just blogs blogs not docs you know, not a not a manual that talks about it, um, and so so that's already. And then you noted developer documentation is mostly inside the plugin source code, and that's that's not a not not always conducive to a first time developer. Now we do have we we do have a uh, a Gitter chat channel. dedicated to uh, Jcask. Uh, it doesn't fit, okay. There we go, okay. <laughs> and we have a special interest group for Jcask. And so that one, I could link you to it as well. Let's see if we can find that. Configuration as code, here we go. And now lately though, the configuration as code um, special interest group meetings have not been happening. There wasn't a significant, sufficient interest amongst developers who were actively working it. So that, those are two places, though, that you oops, that you could certainly ask. So, um, do you, go ahead, Meg. Oh, back to weaknesses. I, maybe I'm just too much of a writer nerd, but um, I would once we get Jcast documented well, I would like to have it sort of integrated into the regular Jenkins configuration. So when you're when we're telling them how to do this and how to do that. You know, I don't you know the thought I had. I don't know if I think of it when I got in there, but to say you could do this with Jcask instead. Ah, uh, uh, right, uh, right. Good point. Where because all of the what I want to do is configure my Jenkins. I don't care about the tools. I want to configure. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And to the extent that I've looked at, I've only looked at it a little bit. But I almost feel like we need reference material or something because if I'm used to the GUI, I see these nice long English sentences. Do you want this or that? And then when I look at the the JCASC files, it's all this cryptic annotation. Right. And I will say that most of the time I can kind of guess what it is, but it's not crystal clear. It seems to me that we need some reference somewhere that says, you know, this is the equivalent of the English or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so Diraj, do you have, do you have suggestions in terms of what you would recommend as how we approach it? Yes. So as just mentioned by Meg, if I understand correctly, we are looking for a reference for a YAML file when we are configuring a plugin, let's say, right? Yes. Yes. So I, I was looking through the uh, GitHub repo of uh, Jcask and I found out that they have a demo folder in which they have added the example configuration of some plugins, not all, some plugins. So if you click, there are many plugins there. And if you just, let's say, click on Git and under that, there is a YAML file uh, and it sh shows uh, what you need to 
include in your main Jenkins.yaml file in order to include this git plugin there. So it's like an example for user who just is very new to git plugin. They uh -huh. have to copy and paste it. But the problem here is that not all the plugins are covered there. There is uh, some contributions needed from uh, students or developers because there are so many plugins and uh, I think in that demo there are around maybe 30 40 plugins only present uh, so yes if we are able to include more and more plugin demos in that then that would be great like for anyone just go there on that demo folder and just copy the yaml configuration and just get to know how it works Wonderful. Well, I would say almost anything that you do would move us forward on this. This is, I mean, it's a hot new feature that everybody's excited about. And then you want documentation. It's like, oh, we'll go look at the readme in the repo. Yes, exactly. And I was, uh, my second part of the question was that this the same thing, like, uh, if I, I can contribute to write a documentation as per I, I definitely need to learn a lot because I just found out about it a few weeks ago, but I would love to make it more simplified in the form of a documentation. I like the way you think. <laughs> so would that be a good idea for me to take up this? Because I don't have uh, like expertise on this, but I can ask a question on Gitter channel and get to know how it works. Right. Which might actually revive some interest. I mean, we've got you know, the SIG might get active again, even if there's somebody, I think they sort of got it implemented and now it's sort of gone dormant, right? It, I don't know, Mark, are they working on additional features for it or is it pretty much feature complete? Or we don't even know. Mark, you're muted if you're speaking. There, my there. mistake. Okay, so yes, the this is a great time to add add examples. So so Diraj, the the examples look like they are in the form of readme files with specific example code inside the readme. And for example, while we have GitLab, what we don't have is a GitLab branch source. Um, Jcask example. And so GitLab branch source is, a, is quite a popular plugin that's not here. I guess another way you, so my thought was how do you decide which things, which example to do next? And, and you may say, oh, I'll use plugins that I've got installed. You might say, I'll do things based on the, the count of installations of the plugin. So then you could look at the plugin installation counts to give you a guess hey, I should do this one next, or I should do that one next. That, that, that sounds like a great opportunity. Thanks very much for your interest. Thanks a lot. So, yes, yes, Mike, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's, that would be a, a great benefit to the community. Now, now we might, I wonder if we ought to then as a future, future idea, as you develop more demos, consider automatically copying those demos. To www.jenkins.io so that they can be found by the, to be found by more common users. I mean, because it's it's already got these things are represented as readmes, right? They are readable files, and you can put, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's. And if you go to the Kubernetes plugin, you'll be able to see multiple YAML files in it as well. Because it ah, like okay, so files. so if we look at you said Kubernetes. Yes. Okay. Oh yes, look. Okay, look at this. Oh my. Good. Okay. So so lots of ways that that these could be useful. Ah, okay. This is what this is, is this is showing 
how to what a Kubernetes config map looks like that has the configuration as code definition inside of it. Nice. Okay, and this one's even using job DSL. Wow, very impressive. I actually asked two questions yesterday on GitHub channel of Jcas. First one was that how do you decide which plugin demo you want to put up next on this demo folder? Like how, how do you decide the priority? So Tim actually answered me and said that we actually ideally need as if we have as many plugin demos, that's great. But uh, we go by the popular ones first. So so that's the way forward, I think. So we can start looking at the most popular ones. If they are not documented here in this demo folder, then we can uh, add their configuration. Now, then a second question I asked to him was that, how do you actually, I, I think this is a very beginner question, but for me, I had really, I had doubted how do we generate a YAML file for a particular plugin to add it into this demo folder? Then he told me that you need to just uh, configure it on your Jenkins with the help of the UI and then download the YAML file uh, from that JCAS. It, you can actually export your configuration after you've done uh, configuring in the UI. Now, when you export it, you get the very, very big YAML file. And out of that, you can just extract the YAML, which was uh, automatically is written there as you were just configuring it in the UI. Now that extracted YAML is what you need to put in the demo folder. So the problem I, I think here is that, how do you decide what should be in that demo? Like if we take example of, I think job view plugin. So it, uh, it, it gives us uh, many, many options to add lots of filters. Now, if I want to add a demo of that plugin into this demo folder, like there's so many parameters. How do I decide which one I want to put in? So like I have to do lots and lots of configuration. Where do I stop? Where do I draw the line? Like this is enough for a demo folder. Then uh, Tim suggested me that you need to just configure it as like it is sufficient as much. Just configure it that much. So last thing I want, I, I know I've been speaking for a long time. Last thing I want to add is that uh, these example, uh, demo examples in this uh, repository, I don't think like they can be meant as the best way to know how to configure a plugin. Because if I, because if I add job DSLs YAML into this uh, demo folder, by just uh, uh, playing with few filters, a user will come here and see that, oh, they actually have a YAML file for job, job uh, view plugin. I can actually use that. But they will not be able to understand all the parameters because I, as a contributor, only dealt with just two or three filters. So this is not the go-to destination as of now for people to know about how to configure, configure a particular plugin. That's the point I'm trying to make. So, I'm so sorry for speaking so long. <laughs> oh, you, you were great. I wonder if we might consider our experience with pipeline steps as an illustration of the kind of thing that you were just describing. So what we've seen is that with the pipeline steps documentation, users often, what we have is we have incomplete, but accurate, but correct material. And it's incomplete in the sense that it gives the name of the argument, but does not tell what the argument does or what it doesn't do. And what we've found is that users are grateful for that because at least it tells them, oh, this is what I have to do, but they want something more exhaustive. And what we found is the best way to get them something more thorough is to tell them to use the snippet generator for pipeline or in, in the case of JCAS to tell them to configure it from the user interface and then use export to, to do that. So so now, Durash, have you had some experience with JCAS? Because I could quickly bring it up for you and show you an export of a of a production sized instance if that will help. Yes, definitely that would help. Okay, so so here's my Jenkins server that I have running. Um, yeah, 
So this is this is a Jenkins instance, a controller that I have running that I use for tests. It's got several thousand job definitions, folders, credentials, all sorts of things like that. If I go to manage Jenkins and then configuration as code, when I show view configuration, it will compute the current configuration and show me all sorts of things that are this, the samples of this thing. So right, right now what we're looking at is the encrypted credentials of these things. And then we've got all sorts of other components. We'll get through the credentials here in a little bit. There we go. So now a bunch of labels that are defined on this one. The agent protocol definition, which protocols are supported. The authorization strategy, all here. And each of these, I think, is an example of the kind of fragment you were describing. So, oh, here's a tool definition for, let's see, let's find a tool definition. Here we go. Here are some agents that I have, so some nodes. And it's saying this node has this IP address and it is this computer name, et cetera. So, so here are your fragments. And what you do is copy that or save it to disk. The other thing we can do is just download the configuration. And now I can load it into my text editor like this. Oops, let's load it into the text editor like that. And there it is. So now I have ready to go all sorts of things that I can do with these. I can turn it into fragments just by deleting pieces of it. Does, does, that, does that help with uh, what Tim was describing in terms of view the configuration and download it? Yes, that, that actually makes sense to me now. Yeah, so so that's that's quite similar in terms of experience to the thing we get when we use pipeline syntax, where we have the same kind of experience where I, I do something with it, prepare this thing, and then when I click generate pipeline script, here is the script that I would paste into my pipeline. So the same kind of thing as the, the same concept is applied in configuration as code, I can generate these fragments like that. Now, if you'd like to see um, examples of fragments of that, here is another in case it helps you. Again, whoops, GitHub. And let's look, oh, my GitHub, just a minute because I've got a repository where I have a, a number of things that I track. This Docker LFS repository under its LTS with plugins branch has some, some interesting JCASC um, example here. So here is Jenkins.yaml and this is my, my JCASC definition that I'm using. And, and there, there are things like this all over, right? So there's nothing particularly special about this one. It's, but, but the concept is there. Yes, thanks for showing that. So the, it is a Ruby scheme generator for all these features? Good, good question. So is there a schema generator? And the answer is there really isn't. Uh, because um, the, the uh, JCASC uh, is JCASC, what, what would you call them? The, the data structure is defined In by different. introspection of the Jenkins Java classes. Oh, okay, okay. So cool. it, it looks at the plugin class hierarchy and and extract certain things out of that out of, out of those classes and uses introspection to do it. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, very good question. Diraj, yeah. anything else that you wanted us to, to be sure we, oh, go ahead. 
yeah we, if you look back at all these uh, shrink wrap products right uh, until the first decade of the century we used to do a lot of schema generation using tools right right and and well it's it's a hint actually that computers have gotten so much faster that we don't even have to do schema generation we'll pay yeah. the penalty of doing schema generation live continuously it's like mm -hmm. wow really i am wasting that much processing power to do live schema generation all the time yes actually yeah. We're, yeah. we're looking at the code inside of it look at having it look at itself and decide what the schema should be yeah yeah true yeah all right so anything else on on Jenkins configuration as code, Diyash. Uh, I was wondering if you can tell me, like you have written there, how to decide what to include in a demo of a specific plugin. So you've written that configure it in an interesting way and then save that, right? So Correct. can you please tell me like the, what, how do you define an interesting in this case? Um, so there, the, if it's, I think the definition of interesting is if it's interesting to you, that makes it interesting. And if, if you say, oh, I'm not sure what interesting means, you could look at other, other locations for, for ideas. For instance, the uh, ci.jenkins.io configuration is interesting. And it's interesting because it's large and it handles many, many things. Um, there are other configurations like it. Uh, for instance, I think the machine release.ci.jenkins.io is now being tracked by, by configuration as code. Uh, I don't know if you have access to read that configuration as code because it, it contains some sensitive information like the code signing keys. But, but those two, this one will tell you an interesting configuration of a Jenkins controller and others, let's see, and I think my Mark's Docker LFS LTS with plugins is interesting, though not, um, it contains no credentials, right? It contains no secrets, no sensitive information. And sen keeping sensitive information is an important topic. So I, Did, did that answer your question? Yes, definitely. I'll check this out and that would be really great. Thank you. Great. Excellent. Okay. So next topic then, Meg, you had asked about pipeline steps improvements. So for, for benefit of Sudakar and Diraj, are you okay, Meg, if we first do a let's look at how bad it is and that then talk good, about yes. where we're going next? Right. Or we could talk about what's happened with SheCode with the Contributhon. Yeah, which would you prefer? We could do either I don't of those. care, I'm good either way. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a two minute overview of how bad things are, oops. Two minute yeah. overview of how bad things are and then we'll talk about, to, about the steps we're taking to improve things. So Jenkins, the Jenkins pipeline domain specific language is defined dynamically by the plugins that are installed in the current uh, Jenkins installation. Um, however, we also present a summary of all plugins and the pipeline steps that they implement in this pipeline steps reference. So this is, this is the set of all, all plugins that provide any pipeline implementation. And only a subset of these are installed on any particular user's computer, but they are, some subset is installed. Now, and if we look- is, And this is an auto-generated doc. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it shows, so let's show how it shows what it means to have an auto-generated doc and a doc that has been, that is, is the output of programmer written documentation. We love developers, we really do, but sometimes they don't write documentation much. Let's see if we can find, here it is, pipeline build step. Okay, so <laughs> this one gives a, a reasonable description here of what, what's the job parameter. 
now what about and what does propagate mean and what does this mean and oops no description of what weight means and then if we start expanding things here it gets gets much worse so let's say what about git parameter oh it takes a name and a value but that's it no description of what the name means how it's used what the value is uh, what about a file? Oh, same thing. What about date parameter? Oh, it's got a name, a value, and a description. So this is the kind of, oh, wow. If you're, if you're using the Jenkins pipeline and this were your only source of information about how to use it, you are very, very in, in a very bad way, right? It's, this, is, this is not going to help you. But this makes it actually quite easy to use the pipeline, <laughs> I just choose the thing I want and it generates the syntax for me. Yeah. We were and getting frequent complaints from users that they were apparently reading this page without knowing that they could use the snippet generator. Yeah. <laughs> and and they just didn't know. And so what we've been doing is having a team of, of writers in, in West Africa actually writing hints to people on these kinds of pages that says, please use the snippet generator. Although even there, there's stuff like the one you were just looking at, it's like name of project. Well, is that the display name for the project or the name I gave when I said create new item? Right. Um, even there, some of that is not. And so the snippet generator doesn't tell me everything. Correct. And, and there's plenty to be improved in. No, I don't know in, what's under the question marks. Yeah, but. There's plenty to be improved in this, right? That is absolutely plenty to be improved about, about what this is. Yeah. So now, okay. Now Meg, back to the, our talk. Be sure we talked about pipeline steps improvement, right? Right. I, I had a question. Go ahead. Uh, basically, if uh, JCASC gets widely deployed, is the pipeline functionality uh, visibility that much less critical? I, actually, they're they're quite distinct from each other. So, J, JCASC does the configuration of global and system level definitions of Jenkins, things like which okay. which authentication method should we use okay, okay. etc but what's my ldap server yeah. those kind of things it, it will remember the credentials for my github server or for but mm -hmm. what it does not do is define the code that should be executed while running a pipeline and that really needs jenkins pipeline so okay. so that that distinction is is the is the subtlety there yeah yeah okay got it, got it. okay JCAS. Yeah, on, excellent. Configures the environment for Jenkins. Right, right, exactly. It, it truly yeah. is. My mental model for it is is just configuration. It's okay. not execution, right? It, it gets okay. the initial conditions set and then steps aside. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So now, in terms of of persuading people to use the snippet generator one of the things that we've gone after was something like this as an idea oops let's just do git maybe that's what it is so i get for editing the url shame on me okay yeah. oh no this is not even the right page right this one was the the idea we had was should we try something like this where we embed a link to a video into the page in hopes that some portion of the users will click the link and go to the video and watch. In this case, it says, this is a 90 second video clip. Watch it on how you use pipeline syntax. Now, the hint is it's only existed for, let's see, February, so March, April, May, just approaching three months and it already has 1500 views. So it's, it's not been ignored. And so there's some hint that this video technique might actually be be helping some people. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Pipeline connector will be very useful, given that every project will have to use it. 
Right. Yeah, I agree. So, so now, Meg, that's that's me blathering. Which which pieces of pipeline steps improvements did you want to highlight? <laughs> well, I'm just thinking. I mean, with the sheet, we had the sheet coders had a couple of of steps of uh, plugins that I think we decided to not have. They were high priority ones, but they were so complicated, we couldn't figure things out, and we gave them something more. So we still got that. Um, where are we going to find more people who want to keep working on this? I see what you're asking. So that's that's a that's maybe that's worth highlighting here in this session that have not yet been touched, right? Have not yet been right. touched to improve their documentation. And and so for example, what we did with SheCode Africa is we generated a pivot table of which plugins had the most complaints. Now this is a this is an, a, an awkward kind of pivot table, right? This is this is not the the thing you say, oh, everybody's happy about it. It's rather which things cause the most complaining. And here is this table that shows the most complained about plugin was the build step with 86 complaints of those 86 only one said the, the documentation was very helpful. Every other one was worse than very helpful. Second on the list was the SCM step, checkout. And again, not a single vote for very helpful. So obviously we've got lots of things that we can do to improve this. So Meg, was that was that sort of addressing your question? Because I think right, we've still got sort of, yeah, that we've got stuff hanging over. Where I mean, it's a resourcing project, I guess, and for open source. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really documentation of their parameters. Right. And their let's see, of oh, their what do you call it? Their steps. Um, parameters and return values yeah and code examples for the calling sequence oh right right uh, and they need examples the most frequent request in the feedback on the documentation is give me examples of pipeline and, and it's the same question that Diraj was asking with regard to configuration as code, right? How do I write a good example that will satisfy a significant portion of the users when I don't know what their arguments or the arguments are most important to them? Yeah. Right. Right. And we'll decide what I don't know if we want to put this the possibility of putting a check in for when changes are made to a uh, um, a plugin that has steps to at least ping them that there's nothing in your HTML directory or something. I don't suppose uh -huh. we can tell we can tell whether it's useful or not, but we could, and we probably can't bust them now. Start busting them now. Let not let them. Re but we can at least put out a warning that this is not does not seem to be documented. Ah, oh, right, right. Okay, that's that's for instance, we could automate a test that asserts. Plugin steps have documentation. Right. And and we could automate it that plugin steps have have a symbol defined. Yeah, good. Okay. I mean I'm thinking there may be a certain number of plugin developers who don't realize that they're supposed to do that. Right. Right. I think you're correct. They, they would be willing if we would just tell them, hey, you know that you're missing documentation for this, this, and this. Right. And then tell them how to do it. Mm -hmm. it may not be instantly obvious. Okay. Great. Um, and, and those comments are under She Code Africa, not Pipeline Steps Improvements. Uh, right. Right. I was just going to delete that. So okay. I think, I think, because for me at least, well, 
which which makes more sense to you meg do you want those moved up oh i don't know it's up to you there uh, we'll go like that yeah that we okay because then i was just say i'm just curious what we're doing to wind down she code africa we got um oleg was quite insistent on slack last night that we should uh begin the the winding down process yesterday so most of our monday meeting went to that which was probably good oleg did it so um right and so one more thing that you and i need to do so mentors will need to um grade the the participants and it's basically pass fail to decide if we recommend that they should be paid the $500 stipend or not. Okay. And what I've got is Mark has the action item to extract, Mark to extract, summarize um, results to date for others and then invite comments from other mentors. The idea being that let's let's have just one of us do a, the legwork of reading through the documents, deciding how far did they reach, how many pull requests, etc. Um, and then, what about a summary of things? Um, you mentioned something. Uh, you mentioned something about sending out a survey before the Monday meeting. Well, you, I think you were talking in, or the Friday meeting. And I wonder with um, they seem very. I don't know that this group is going to be comfortable in a meeting to speak up and say. You could have done this better and you could have done that better. Oh, oh, right. And in fact, the retrospective has already been sent. Been sent. Survey? Oh, okay, good. And then no, we've at least got issues that we can talk about. We can say, you know. Right. And it, it's not. I, so let me see if I can find it really quickly here because uh, retro, oops, retro. Because if I link to it, then Jenkins. Nope. Looks like I'll have to look for it further. Okay, um, that's fine. Yeah. That was sent by Oleg and oh oh actually I, I take it back. I know right where it is, Meg. It's right at the bottom of this document. Oh yes, because that's where you took notes last right, night. Right. So it's all the way down here. Here's the retrospective. And I've started filling in some comments from me. Oleg put some from him. And we hope that the stu students will insert their comments as well. And that's what I'm wondering if an anonymous survey to send out to the mentor to the to the she coders. We, I, I think some of them are going to be very uncomfortable saying negative things. Right. And and I'm I, I'm not sure how to how to resolve that because even an anonymous survey, we only have a sample size of five. It's 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 not not going to be anonymous no matter what. Right, right. And we can, but we don't, what I'm, what I'm thinking though, is it would tell us if, you know, if all of them say something about the same thing, we can talk about it at least, you know, mm, right. It's, it's just another, it's another way to get feedback. Um, it feels less intimidating than putting my name on a document or saying something in a meeting. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't have a survey planned. I'm, for me, surveys are very difficult to create. If they you, are. If you think it would help I'm, and you're willing to do it, I would love to try the experiment. In my case, I'm just going to go with the, the retro retrospective and right. then we'll ask questions in the meeting. And yeah, and maybe the, and maybe the good, because I think, I mean, it would be, the question is getting information from them about how we could have helped them better. And, right. you know, so if we put enough of the, you know, problems that we saw there, then we, you know, then they're, they can either agree with us that it was a problem or they have to disagree with us that no, no, that wasn't a problem. So. Right. Yeah. And, and I like that because that way they, they, they share with us, well, it wasn't a problem for me. And one of them may say, oh, but it was a problem for me. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. We've, we've only got three minutes left. Um, there was, I'd propose we just briefly touch the last two topics and call ourselves done. Sounds good to me. Okay, so the search report from the Jenkins plugin site looks like, where is it? Plugins. 
I just received it today. Uh, and that's why I was so, so charmed by it. Uh, nope, I don't see it now in my list. I should have, oh, nope, I don't have it. So plug in search. Nope. Oh, here we go. Algolia usage. This is, no, this is from two weeks ago here. I'll show it so you can see. So this highlights our total usage. Ah, here we go. And this is what I wanted to see is open up the Algolia dashboard. So because we're using Algolia as this open source, as an open, as a, their open source program, it lets us take a look at how things are going on people who are searching the plugin site. And so we can see, oh, hey, we're down here. Um, I've got to look at the, the, so we're, yeah, so conversion rate's not terribly helpful, but there we go. One hint, a 10% no results. So one in 10 queries to the plugin site generates no results. And if we look at this, the top searches without results are right here. Uh -huh. TFS, check style, PMD. And of those three, these two actually have plugins that implement them, uh -huh. but they're not named PMD or check style. So, so there's something we need to improve there in terms of our aliasing or our synonyms to say, okay, check style should be a synonym for the warnings next generation plugin. Uh -huh. And PMD should be a, a synonym for the the next the warnings next generation plugin. Great. Okay. Thank you very much to everyone. Much appreciated. I think that covers the topics that we had for today. Right. And you guys are ready to start work then? Do you have everything you need to do what you need to do? Yeah. This is Sudakar. Uh, I do, but uh, I have a question. Uh, is there a, a website or something where I should look at uh, getting started for technical writers for Jenkins project to understand the tools used? Yes, yes, there is, absolutely. So let me, if it's okay with you, Sudhakar, let's go to, um, and this will be available in the recording as well if you need to ref refer back to it. So okay. the GitHub, actually first thing is, when you see a page, the simplest way to find where that page is maintained is usually down at the bottom of the page, okay. there is an improve this page hyperlink. Okay. And so if I click that improve this page hyperlink, it takes me into the GitHub repository for okay. that page. Okay. So, so there's the, the first, if, seeing, oh, here's a page, now how do I do it? Now now the general, how do I contribute? Here's this contributing.adoc that gives you an outline of what it means to contribute. What are the, you know, as a newcomer, what do I need to do? How do I communicate with people? Uh, how do I run, how do I, how do I build the site locally so that I can see how it looks? Those kind of things. Okay. And okay. Are you familiar with ASCIAC? Have you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, I heard about it, but I haven't used, I've done a little bit of markdown and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. You, if you've done markdown, this will be, feel very comfortable. It's, okay. yes, it's slightly different than markdown, but it's, it's just a markup language. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, since this Kubernetes thing is a, um, and Jenkins are, uh, kind of a overview topic. Uh, can I use you, Mark, as the point of contact or should I still have? Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Now, uh, with, with the caveat that you're, you're asking questions of someone who is not an expert, but I know a lot of people who are experts. So, yeah, so you I are apologize. Technical evangelist, right? So that's why I'm asking you. So. <laughs> right, right. So the oh, I know you are the source of information. So yeah, I've seen a couple of your videos. So yeah, and also so, there is a the Gitter channel. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other topics we need to discuss? I'm good. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Recording should be available in probably an hour. If it's not available in an hour, it will be 12 or 14 hours before I post it <laughs> because it's time for me to get some sleep. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for staying out. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank Talk to you next yeah. week. Same here. Good day. Bye. Bye.